Okay, so last time we were talking about percentages. Um, I'm sorry, we're talking about decimals and percentages. So we're in packet five. Oh, gosh, I can't <laughs> keep saying the wrong thing. We were on packet four, and we're just going to finish that up. So um, last time we were talking about how to convert between a decimal and a percent. So if you want to write a percentage as a decimal, you need to move the decimal point to the left two places. If you want to write a decimal as a percent, you need to move the decimal point to the right two places. So let's look at how we can do some math with percentages. So the reason we care about converting between a percent and a decimal is because you can do math with decimals. You can't really do math with percentages. You need to convert them either to a fraction or a decimal. And right now what we're working with are um, decimals, so let's do that. So whenever you see a problem that says find the percent of, the word of in mathematics just means like multiply, okay? So whenever you see of, that usually is going to mean multiply. So if you want 26% of 143, that means do 26% as a decimal times 143. So 26% is 0.26. Remember, you move the decimal over two places. And then times 143. And I'm just going to do that with the calculator. So 0.26 times 143 is equal to 30, 37.18. Okay. So if I want to do 37% of 500, remember of means multiply, so I first need to convert 37% to a decimal, so I move it over two places, so 0 0.37 times 500, so point, oh, my mouse is all over the place, 0 0.37 times 500 equals 185, 185. All right, and when you have 127% of 76, the decimal point is here, so you need to move it over to right there. Oopsie. So it's 1.27 1. times 76. So, where, where my mouse at? 1.27 times 76, right? Yeah. And you get 96.52. Notice when you have a percent that's less than 100, when you perform the multiplication, you get something that's smaller. And when you have a percent that's greater than 100, you get something that's bigger. So that's important to remember. Okay, let's try doing a, um, let's try doing a word problem. Okay, so you're trying to buy a book that is 40% off. If the book originally cost $23, how much does it cost after the discount? Okay, so if the book was originally $23, we need to find out what 40% off of that is by first figuring out, well, what is 40% of 23? So 40% of 23, we do that by doing 0.4 times 23, okay, so 0.4 times 23 is equal to 9.2. So that's how much we're going to save, but we're asked how much does it cost after, okay? So this means we need to now subtract this amount from the 23. So we do 23 minus 9.2. So back over here 23 minus 9 point oops let's try this again 23 minus 9.2 is equal to 13.8 all right now there's actually a way to do this in a quicker one-step method so we had to do two steps we had to do step one which is do 0.4 times 23 to find the 40 percent off and then step two was to do um, the subtraction. Well, like if you're in a store and you're just trying to figure out, well, how much am I going to have to pay for this book? 
you don't want to have to do these two two steps. I mean, you probably, if you have a calculator, um, it's, you know, you just have like the little calculator on your phone and it's not very easy to do like these multi-step problems with. So what I recommend doing is um, a single step method. And if you don't do it this way, it's fine. It's just a trick to make things a little easier for you. So if it's 40% off, so originally, if you were to pay the full price, right? If you're paying full price for the book, you'd be paying 100% of the cost, right? But if it's 40% off, then you're actually only paying 60% of the cost. So what we're paying is 60% of $23. So if I do 0 0.6 times 23, 0.6 times 23, notice I go ahead and get the final answer. Okay, so really what I was doing with, um, so let me write this in money, $13.80, 20 cent. Um, let me clean this up a little bit. $13.80. And that looks, sorry. Let me just make it look nicer. Oh, all of this looks gross. Okay, all of it looks gross. Let me just try it again. Okay, $13.80. $13.80. So what I did was I performed the subtraction, but I did it like when I did this 60% one, I did 100 minus 40 and then times... Um, and then times 23. So I just kind of did the order in a different way. And later when we learn more about um, multiplication and um, distributive property and stuff like that, we'll, we'll talk about how, why that works, okay? So we'll, we'll explain this a little bit better later, but it's just a trick to help you um, do this a little bit um, more quickly, okay? So how much would the book cost you in total if the tax is 7.5%? Now this is, um, this is gonna work a little differently where we have the tax is going to be, so here's the sale price, right, 13.8, and I wanna know what the tax is. If the tax is 7.5%, to find that, I need to do 7.5% of 13.8. Eight. Let me put a dollar sign there too. Dollar sign. Well, actually, I don't want to put it on there. Sorry, I'm wasting time fiddling with this. Okay, so I want to find seven point five seven point five percent of thirteen point eight. So I need to move the decimal place over two places. So that's going to be 0 0.075 times 13.8. So I do 0 0.075 times 13.8. Okay, so it's equal to $1. So 1.035. Well, we can't really save $1 and three cents and a half a cent, right? It's one dollar and three and a half cents. We can't really say that. So let's just assume that it rounds up. So I'm gonna round it up. Now when you round, you usually use these two little squiggly lines to represent an equal symbol, um, a, a rounded equal symbol. So it's like a squiggly equal. So I'm gonna round it up to four. So one dollar and four cent. So if I wanna find what it is after tax, I need to add let me scooch this over a little bit. I need to add the dollar and four to the 13.8. So I do, so this was my first step. I first needed to find out how much the tax was gonna be. And now the second step is to add the tax to the original, well, the, the sale price. So plus one dollar and four cent. So, <clears throat> excuse me, 13.8 plus 1.04 is equal to 14.84. And I did 
didn't put my dollar sign on this one either. Scooch it. Scooch it over. Put a dollar sign. Okay. So there's also a trick for to do tax. And it involves using um, over 100 percentage. So if you were going to pay for this book with no tax, okay, let's ignore the, the discount for a minute. Let's just think about the book. Let's say the book was $13.80 and we're not thinking about a um, discount at all. If we were going to pay that $13.80, we would be paying 100% of the asking price, right? But we, once we pay tax, we're not paying 100% of the asking price. We're paying 100% of the asking price and 7.5%. So we're paying 107.5%. So 107.5% of 13.8. Okay. So this way, if I just do move that, scooch that decimal point over two places, 1.075 times 13.8, if I do that, 1.075 times 13.8 is equal to 14835, which if we round it up, is $14.84. Same, same answer. Okay. So notice you can do these. Oh. I cannot like be happy with the way I draw these boxes today. Um, you can do both of these things, discounts, a discount and adding tax by just fiddling with the percentage a little or with the percentage a little bit. So I do the tax one all the time. Um, if I'm trying to figure out, well, how much if I'm buying something that's 20, 1999 and my sales tax is 8.5% or whatever, and I want to know how much it is, I just stick in my calculator 1.085 times 1999. Okay. Now there is a problem with this, these two steps. Okay. So with these two, these two tricks, you cannot combine them. All right. You can't do, um, well, let me do 60% plus 7.5%. And so let me just see what 67% of, of the original price is. You'll see. So if I tried to do like, okay, well, this one's 60 and this one's 7.5. Let's do 67.5. If I do that, that'd be 0. 0.675 times 23. And you'll see it's not the right answer. Okay, so you can't combine these two things. You can't do uh, the discount one and the tax one. Okay, but you can do them as individual steps. So you could find the 13.8 and then um, subtract. And that's an, uh, why that works. We'll talk about more when we get more into like more algebra kind of stuff. And we start talking about the distributive property and some different things. Um, so I might not talk about this example specifically, but... Um, just know when I start talking about that stuff, that's why this does these uh, two tricks work and why the, the combination trick does not work. Okay. So I'll try to remember to do that though. All right. Is that the last thing on this page? What do we got here? I think that is. Oh, nope, it was not. Okay. So if you want to find the percent of a given number, you just do the multiplication. Well, a lot of the problems that you're going to get with um, with percentages, they're not going to be written in that way. They're not going to be, what is 26% of 143? You'll have ones that are written a little more, um, let me scooch this, um, a little differently. Okay. So, like this one says, what is 81% of 76? Okay, cool. But you might have other ones that say like, what percent of 150 is 60? And 3% of what is 65? And 100 is 125% of what? So you might have other one uh, than written in a different way. Now, when we learn how to solve equations, you could just start with one equation and kind of do some algebra fiddling to get these to work. But for now, I'm going to just show you three separate equations that you can use for this. Okay. So 
Mm. Excuse me, I need to get a drink. So to be able to do these percent problems, you need to be able to ad identify three numbers. The first number is the amount, which we're gonna call A. It's the amount or percentage. It's a part of a base, and I'll explain that in a minute. The amount, okay? So in those examples, we were looking at what is 81% um, of 20, 76, the answer was the amount. Okay. The amount is actually the hardest one to recognize in these sentences. The other two are easier to recognize. So let's look at, let's look at rate. Let's talk about that one first. Rate. Rate is the easiest one to recognize in these sentences because it's always the percentage. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is find rate, which is the percentage. Okay. And then the next thing you're going to find is base. Base is actually pretty easy to find too because it always comes after the word of. Okay? It's the number we're trying to find the percent of. So it always comes after the word of in these sentences. And then amount is just the amount or percentage. It's the part of the base. So the first thing you want to do is figure out, okay, well, which two of these letters do I know? Do I know, know A, B, or R? Then Whichever one you're looking for, you'll use the equation. So if you know B, R and B, then you're going to use this equation, okay? And you're looking for A. If you know A and R, then you use this equation. So let's just look at some examples real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what R is. Where's R? R is always the one with the percentage. So this one's my R, okay? And then base, remember, always comes after the word of. So this is my B. So I have an R and a B, which means I need to use this one. I'm looking for A. So I'm just gonna put an A over the word what and put a little box over it to let me know that's the thing I'm trying to find. So I'm gonna use the equation that says A equals R times B. So if I wanna find this amount, I just do A is equal to, now I can't write 81% in here, remember to perform math with percentages, you need to first convert them to decimal. So if I move that over two places, I'm going to have 0.81. So A is equal to 0.81 times, and then my B is the thing that came after the of, 76. And I'm just going to use the calculator for this today. 0.81 times 76 is equal to 61.5. Five, six. Okay, let's try one. So this is what we were just doing, right? We were answering questions in the same way, but now we're using an equation to, to kind of set up our logic around it. Let's try doing one that's not written in the same way. What percentage of 150 is 60? Well, the first thing we're looking for is the one with the percent symbol. Well, I don't have one with a percent symbol, but notice it asks, what percentage or what percent okay so the thing we're looking for is r right if you didn't notice that at first though you'll see once you find the other ones if i have of remember b always comes after of so this one is my b so that's my b and then 60 it doesn't have a percentage symbol on it right so it can't be my rate so it must be my A. That's the only other choice I got. So the thing we're looking for, what percent is B? Eh, not B. It's R. Sorry about that. The thing we're looking for is R. Okay, so R is equal to, this time we're going to use the second equation. R is equal to A over B. So I just need to do scroll down a little bit r is equal to 60 over 150 so r is equal to 6 over 15 well let's just do i'll just put it in the calculator the way it's done because i haven't gone over fractions yet so 60 over 150 so r is equal to 0.4 but it didn't ask what decimal okay the answer is not 0.4 percent right the answer is 40% because this is the decimal version and I need to move my decimal over one 
two places to give me 40%. So you want to be really careful with questions like this. If they ask what, um, what percentage, okay, what percent of, and then you don't want to give an answer of 0.4 because it didn't ask you for the decimal. It asked you for the percent. And you will likely, especially if you're doing this on a, um, like a computer program where it like, gets auto, auto grading for you, you will likely get it wrong. Okay. Let's try another one. 3% of what is, let me scooch this one smaller too so we can make these a little smaller, get that there. I did not leave, left, leave enough room in here. Okay, that looks a little better. Okay, 3% of what is 65.4? Okay, so the 3%, it has a percent symbol on it, right? So it's an R. The next one to look for is the base. It always comes after the word of. Well, the word what comes after the word of, so that must be the thing we're looking for, right? So this is B. That's what we're looking for. And then A is there. Now, here's the thing about A. You might notice that the word is shows up around it. The word is is usually in front of or behind A. So, um, so, but is is in front or, oops, gosh. Or behind A. Okay, so the problem with that one is it kind of moves around depending on the sentence structure, but it can kind of point you in the direction of where A is going to be. It just sometimes is in the front, sometimes in, is in the back. It's not as consistent as B, where it's always after the word of. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so 3% of what is 65.4. So this time we're looking for B, which means we're going to use this second equation up here, which says B is equal to A over R. So B, and I'll just do it big over here, is equal to A over R. So B is equal to, so um, A was 65.4. And 3%, so we need to convert this to a decimal, so it's 0 0.03, 0 0.03, so B is equal to, so 65.4 times 0 0.03, 1.962. Now this time, we do not... Um, 3% of what is 60, that, I did it wrong. Oh, I did it in multiply. So the reason I knew this was wrong is because I knew that number was, B was supposed to be bigger. So, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Let's, um, if I do entry, I did a multiplication instead of division. Here we go, that makes way more sense. Okay, two, one, eight, zero. Okay, so this time I don't need to convert it to a decimal or to a percentage or anything because we are finding B. The only time you need to worry about converting to a percentage is when you were finding R. Okay, so the reason I knew I had, had to have stuck that in the calculator wrong was because when you divide by a percent or when you divide by a decimal like this, um, you should always get something bigger than what you, or the original number. And I knew it had to be real big. So, cause this 65.4, if it's gonna be 3% of anything, it needs to be some really big number. So that's how I knew it was wrong. But division by a decimal always gives you something bigger than you started with. Okay, so let's try the next one. So 100 is 125% of what number? Okay, so we know this one's definitely R, right? Here's our of. So that means of, remember, of always comes before the B. So we're looking for B. And then 
of what? And so that means this one must be A. Okay, these are all squished together. I don't like how little room there is here. Maybe I should put these underneath them. I'll do that when I, um, before I convert the, these to PDF. Okay, so this time we're looking for B, which means we're gonna use that second one, B is equal to A over R, which is the same one we just used. Okay, so B is equal to A over R. B is equal to, so this time A is 100. R is equal to, we need to convert that to a decimal. So converted to a decimal is 1.25. So 100 divided by 1.25 is going to be, let's see, 100 divided by 1.25, 80. All right, I think this is the last one, and then we'll move on to the next chapter, or the next packet. All right, what is 102% of 87? So 102%, that's my R of, comes before B, so that means 87 must be B. And what is, that's the thing we're looking for, so we must be looking for A. So we're using the original one, the one that we started out the day with. So it's A is equal to R times B. So R is equal to 102%, oh, which is 1.02. So 1.02 times 87. So A is equal to, continue my A down. 1.02 times 87 is equal to 88.74. Cool. So that's it for, that's all I'm going to talk about with decimals for now. Um, I will, as always, I will, um, convert this to PDF and I'll put this answer key on in the class content which if you look at the top right corner you'll see a QR code and a, um, a URL that's where you can find all of the content so this um, the blank version of this packet as well as the answer key will be there for you okay let's move on to packet 5 fractions so it's going to feel for a little bit like I'm just talking about some random stuff. Like, why are you talking about this? We're supposed to be talking about fractions, but don't worry. I have a plan. We're getting there. Okay. So we just talked about percentages. Percentages, really, remember, they were fractions. So we're kind of leaning into the whole fraction thing. And the thing about algebra is once you get into algebra, um, so this is like a pre-algebra class when... Uh, once you get into pre-algebra and start doing algebra, you're going to have to do a lot of stuff with fractions, okay? Um, you're going to do it with regular, like, num number fractions or variable fractions. So let's get real comfortable with them, okay? So. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to take a little detour for a second because this stuff is really important to be able to work with fractions. The first thing I want to talk about are prime and composite numbers. So in a multiplication problem, the numbers being multiplied by each other are known as factors, and the result is a product. I'm pretty sure we talked about that already. Okay, so when you have factors being multiplied by each other, they result in a product. So the reason I'm bringing this up is when you want to go the other way, when you want to take a number and rewrite it as a multiplication, it's known as factoring. To factor means to rewrite as a product, okay? So when we start, um, when a number is written out as a product of other numbers, it's called a factorization. So for example, a factorization of 15 
is equal to 3 times 5. Okay, so a factorization um, of 25 is 5 times 5. Okay, so you might also hear them um, called divisors. The, the factors are known as divisors, but we're not really going to use that term here because the thing we need to know is factors because we're going to use them a lot. Okay, so if I want to list um, all the factors of 14, let's say I just wanted to do that because I'm bored, right? What I want to do is write out all the different ways that I can write um, 14 as a multiplication of two numbers. Okay, so let's just think of this. So we can do 14 is 1 times 14, right? Um, 2 times 7. And then and we can't do, I'm just going to go from 1 up. So 1 times 14, 2 times something. We can't do 3 times anything to get 14. Um, we can't do 4 times anything to get 14, so forth, so forth. So the next one is 7 times 2. And then the next one is 14 times 1. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So every unique number that we see there, 1, 2, 7, and 14, those are all the factors of 14. So 1, 2, 7, and 14. Notice um, the number itself and the number 1 are a factor, and that's going to be true for every number. Every number, 1 and itself, are factors. Okay? So let's look at 20. So let's do the same thing. Well, we're going to start with 1, 1 times 20. We can do 2 times 10. It's not divisible by 3, but it is divisible by 4 because we can do 4 times 5, right? And then 5 times 4. Let me just come over here. And then 10 times 2, and then 20 times 1. Okay. So I didn't really have to write the ones. Uh, I didn't really have to write these. You know, I'm just, since the multiplication is um, commutative, I could have written it, you know, in the same direction. So um, for the any other problems I do like this, I'm not going to, oh, that was the last one. I wasn't going to go in the opposite direction. But um, actually, I'm going to erase these here. So once you kind of, like here, like one, two, notice one, two, four, once you kind of get like right up on the next one, like the next number would be five. So we know that we can't go any further. So when they're right next to each other, you know you're done writing out all the factors. So the factors of this number are, ooh, it's a loud crash upstairs. I hope my kiddo's okay. So the factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Okay, notice once again, 1 and the number itself are factors. So if you're ever asked, what are the factors of a number, and you just totally blank, you have no idea. You just can't perform any divisions for it. Just write one in the number itself, and you got at least two of them. Okay? So, let's get more specific with these factors. So, knowing the factors of a number are important, but there's very specific factors that we're going to be concerned with. The ones we're going to be concerned with are prime factors. So, prime numbers are... All the natural numbers, remember natural numbers are the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So not 0, does not include 0, does not include negative numbers. And a prime number is a natural number greater than 1 whose only factors are 1 and itself. Okay, so a lot of people um, know what a prime number is, but they forget this part. Where are my pins at? Here we go. I forget this part right here. Oh, that's not what I want. That's a. Ugh. I'm. They forget this part right here. For a number to be prime, it needs to first be greater than one. Okay. So, the list of prime numbers are two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-three, twenty-nine, so forth. 
Okay. So the reason I bring this up is a lot of people will ask, well, is one prime? No, it's not. Because by definition, prime needs to be greater than one. So is one prime? No. Oh, well, didn't ask me if it was prime. Ask me if it was prime or composite. If it's not prime, it's considered composite. Well, actually, it's neither. Sorry. Technically, it's neither. So, um, no. And then that is because it is not greater than one. Because, see, it's not a... Um, it's not, not a composite number either because it needs to be greater than one, so it can't even be either. It's neither. Neither or neither, however you want to say it. Same thing with zero. Is zero prime or composite? No! Poor zero. And that's because it's not even a natural number. Oh, I put the answer in the spot where I was supposed to put that. I'm gonna cheat. Cheat and do do. Okay. It's also neither. So, okay, so what is the only even prime number? Okay, so if you look at the list, there's the first one is even, two. Okay, so why is that even? Or, I'm sorry, why is that the only um, even prime number? So, remember, the definition whose only factors are one in itself, right? So, the reason there are no other even prime numbers is because all other, pr um, prime, all other even numbers are going to have two as a factor. All other even numbers have two as a factor. Okay, and just to, you know, beat a dead horse, every natural number except for one is either prime or composite. Okay, so every number that you're gonna come up with above one, that's a natural counting number, is gonna be either prime or composite. So that's important because we're going to need to look at numbers and determine are they prime or not to be able to do some stuff with fractions, okay? So when you're doing these, I recommend kind of keeping this in your back pocket, list of all prime numbers less than 100. It'll help with um, some of the stuff we're gonna do. So the first thing we're going to do is um, talk about prime factorization. So when a number is written as a product of primes, that product is called its prime fact, a prime factorization. So um, <coughs> what we're going to want to do is take a number and rewrite it as a factorization, but we want to make sure that factorization is a prime factorization. So let's look at the pr factorizations we did up here. So this one um, is not a prime factorization, and neither is that. Not, none of these are actually prime factorizations because none of these numbers, except for two, are prime. Two and five, those are prime. But the, none of these products contain only prime numbers. Now, this one right here, two and seven, that does contain only two prime numbers, so that is a prime factorization. So when we're doing these, what we're going to need to do is continue... Oh, well, let me go back up, sorry continue to break them down. So we would take four and break it into its prime factorization um, by doing some divisibility tests. So um, there are some fun divisibility tests for the number two. So you can tell if a number is divisible by two if it ends in zero, two, four, six, or eight. So for example, um, two, twelve. Um, 990. Those are all divisible by 2. Okay. You can tell if it's divisible by 3 if the sum of all of its digits add up to 3. 
Okay, so what do I mean by that? I mean something like one, two, three. If you add those up, one plus two plus three is equal to six. Now we know that's divisible by three, right? Or let's see, three, one, two, one, one, two. Oh, let's see, that goes there, that goes there. One. Did I miss that? Okay, three. One, one, two, three, two, one, one. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Yeah, so I know that number is divisible by three. I could have also done it a little more complicated and made this like a nine or something. Eh, wrong. Wrong one. Let's just do like a nine and a six, whatever. So I know that those are, um, I know that that's divisible by three and because I constructed it as such, because I made sure that I could group all of the numbers into um, adding up to three. So like this adds to three, this adds to three, and then these add to three. Okay. So um, it's divisible by five if it ends in a zero or a five. So like three, one, two, five. 675. Oh, let's just do 670 because it needs in a zero. So those are the first three prime numbers. So if you can recognize if something's divisible by the first three prime numbers, you're going to generally be most of the way towards your prime factorization. So let's look at this one. What is the prime factorization of 63? So I know that 63 is not divisible by 2. I'm just going to go up the list of prime numbers. I know it's not divisible by 2 because it doesn't end in a 0, a 2, a 4, a 6, or an 8. But I do know it's divisible by 3. It's divisible by 3 because 6 plus 3 is 9, and that's divisible by 3. So I know I can do it as 3 times something. So 3 times what? 3 times 21, right? Okay. And now I know I can break the 21 up further, too. I can break it up into, because um, it's not it's not on the list of primes, right? It's not divisible by 2. So here's a hint. If up here, if that number was not divisible by 2, none of the numbers below it are going to be divisible by 2 either. So I'm going to show you two different methods. This first method of factorization is like called a tree method, where I'm breaking things up. I'm also going to do the method that I tend to do, which is um, kind of just writing it out in a list. But um, anyways, so... 21, um, I know it's divisible by 3, because 2 plus 1 is 3. Hold on just a moment.
Oh, I forgot to unmute my mic. Let me restart. I'm sorry. Let me go back to this one. So, uh, well, I'm sure you saw it. Let me just go keep moving. So you don't have to start with a prime number if you don't want to. Okay, you could just be like 88 is 4 times 22. And you can start with that. Um, 4 times 22. Oops. I like starting with the prime number. But if you immediately see like 4 times 22, then you can just break down each of those. Okay. So 88. Um, I'm going to start with 8 and 11 because that's the multiplication I see first. Well, 11 is a prime number. So I'm good there. But 8 is not. 8 is 2 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. So the prime factorization, and it's best to put them kind of in order. 2 times 2 times 2 times 11. Okay. So now let's try 540. So this one I've got left a little bit more room because it's a big number. So this one I am going to not start with a prime number. I'm going to start with 54 and 10 because that's the first multiplication I see. Okay, so I see 54 and 10. Now 10 I know is 2 times 5. So we're good there. 54 is going to take a little bit more work. Okay, so let's just do a little bit. I know it's divisible by 2. 54 by 2 is 27. Now 27 if I do 7 plus 2, it's 3. So I know it's divisible by 3. It's 3 times what? 3 times 9. Okay. And then 9 I know is 3 times 3. Okay, this one's big. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So the prime factorization of this one the way you would write it is 540 is equal to, there's two twos, two times two times, and there's one, two, three, three threes, three times three times three times five. Okay. Oh gosh, this next one. 3,030. So 3,030. Well, I'm going to start with 10 again. Or I can do three, I can do three times 1,010. Yeah, let's do that. Three times 1,010. Or sorry, 10,010. Do I got too many zeros there? Three times 10,010. Okay, so that one's prime. Okay, and I know this one's divisible by 10. Okay, so it's going to be 101. So if you do 10010 zero, zero, one, zero, divided by 10. So it's 1001, zero, zero, one, sorry. 1001 zero, zero, one, and then 10. Okay, uh, let's do this one. So 10 is 5 and 2. This one's going to be a but. Okay, so let's look at our list. So I know it's not divisible by 2. I know it's not divisible by 3. It's not divisible by 5. So the next one was 7. So let's try divided by 7. 143. Okay. So we've, got the f so we've already exhausted all of our 2s, our 3s, are fives. So we don't need to keep checking for um, that for the future ones. 143 we don't need to worry about. It's, if the numbers above it was not, if the number above it was not divisible by 2, 3, or 5, then it's not going to be either. So um, it might be divisible by 7. Let's see if it's divisible by 7. Nope. So the next prime number is 11. There we go. Ooh, that one was tough. Okay. So that 
13 is the prime number following 11. So let's go ahead and write this one out. I don't have any room. Okay. All right. So three zero zero three zero is equal to three. Oh, let me do my two first. Two times three times five times seven times 11 times 13. Okay, so that's just the first six prime numbers. That's, if anybody asks you what the product of the six, the first six prime numbers are, it's 30,030. Okay. Um, that is a, um, that's a good time to call it. Uh, if, I'm going to stop here instead of going on. Because my mic was muted on this one, I'll go ahead and redo this one real quick. Um, just so you can, if you need to hear it, you can hear it. But, um, yeah, I'm going to stop here on page four. So let's scroll up here. Go back. So we had to do 84. So I know it's divisible by two because it ends in a four. So it's two times 42. Okay, and 42 is also divisible by 2 because it ends in a 2. It's 2 times 21. And 21 is one that we had done in the previous one, 3 times 7. So we know it's 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. 2 times 3 times 7. Okay, so since we didn't finish this packet today, I'm not going to be putting the answer key up online just yet. I will put it up when the packet is finished, but the packet answer key for packet four will be up soon. Thank you so much. I will see you next week. Where's my mouse? Ah.